20 minute game playing as white let's go this capture I've not seen the capture for a while everybody's been fancy let's just take this off the board strategic removal of pieces get the bishop into the game long pause shall we castle He's already got his pieces, he's looking to champion the king area that we have. So I'm going to, if I take this knight then it opens up the rook and it's giving him more leeway. So I have to be very careful where I place my pieces. I am interested in doing this move, but his queen takes the pawn. So I'm going to bring the knight out first and then bring this here if the bishop is still there. Knight's looking to dance around here. His queen wants to get into this area somewhere, or just slightly over here when he drops this pawn. So there he goes for the cheapy. Always got to remember the cheapies. The cheapies are the lifeblood of the quick and dirty tactic player, and also quick and dirty tactics. If you're in the mood to do a quick and dirty tactic, it's not actually doing that. Is a that's like a I don't know what to do move so early on in the game when he could have just dropped here to start putting pressure on so this makes me think the opponent may struggle going forward so let's go here tack the bishop like we said it's got no protection on can go back if it wants to align his pawns back again he does do so let him align the pawns back I don't have a problem with that okay so we've given him the instruction of what to do Okay, so that's really quite nice for us. So now we know the king area is going to be swarmed. We could look to just exchange the queen out because he doesn't know what to do. So we may as well go for the queen exchange. And they'll be happy that they're taking pieces off the board. Chess psychology, just my own. He might, he might try and be fancy and lose tempo moving the queen. He might go for the cheap position still. So we should be blocking this um, Scud missile sometime soon. It's just I'm um, thinking, I, yes, so it does capture. I, I believe the opponent doesn't know what to do. So I'm trying to jump on that bandwagon of if they don't know what to do, let's capitalize and put as much pressure towards their area or their pieces as we can. It's not saying it's a guaranteed thing. It's just a psychological thing. Um, everybody has their own psychological ways of working. So now he's opened up, bishop is looking to come here to champion this area. If we move the king up, his knight can come, but he's not putting a check on us just yet. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to move the king out of the way. So we'll give our line a little bit of freedom to come up here and start pestering the pawns. He may be doing little small moves like this, you know, to disturb the bishop. We can always come back. But we've got this mindset that the opponent doesn't know what to do based on the type of movements that they've made in the early part of this game. Doesn't mean that it's easy, it just means, well, okay, if they don't, we can start really pressuring certain areas and hopefully they'll make a mistake because they're not quite sure what to do. So he's attacking our bishop. I can freely take there. It's going to open up space in front of his king. Okay, so we can attack this pawn here. His rook can come and defend, obviously, either doing the queenside castling or just bringing the rook here. Queenside castling it is, so his queen is now on the other side of the board. And we could look to double up on this pawn. <coughs> 
then his king can drop here so we could go here with the rook just to but obviously you can simply push down so this is a simple player um, no airs and graces to this player at all which is quite good for us now we can jump here and attack this pawn his king is obviously going to drop down to de defend it Okay, so his king is now supporting two pawns, so I'm going to now double up. This pawn is not protected, so we can always slide our rook up to defend or bring the king into the game a little bit. At the moment the knight can't come here and here because these two pawns are blocking off. So I'm thinking the principle is attacking these two pawns now because the king is being overworked. Like I said, he's going to come down and attack that, so defend here. In fact, I was going to bring the king up, wasn't I? So now his knight's in the game. So his knight's in the game because he wants to attack the rook and the pawn. So he's going to have a two on one there. Okay, so he's moving quite lively. Now all of a sudden he seems to know what he wants to do. So I'm going to bring our rook here for a two on one on his pawn. So we've got the king defending this pawn, got the rook defending this pawn. We're also attacking this area here. We can always bring his rook around to defend. But we're going on oh, we're going on the principle that we don't believe the opponent knows what to do. Now this is a totally different player from the opening earlier part of the game. So you've got to be mindful of that. So we're now seeing a totally different player. So I'm going to bring the knight down. Knight can escape. The rook can't escape though. So he's gonna get his two on one wish here. So they're taking a while over the 2 on 1 because it could be a simple knight take and then they're on our rook. What are they worried about? Plus, also, our. Um, he's taking with the knight. Let's just move the rook here. This pawn's dropping down onto our rook. So maybe I over it because I believe they didn't know what they were doing. So we probably over overreached ourselves and didn't really place our pieces appropriately. So we were overconfident in our position. So we should have taken a step back. Rooks don't have any place in the center of the board. And look where my rook is. So I've broken my mantra already. So I'm going to pay the price for breaking my mantra. <clears throat> and we already have done. So they've moved the knight again. Um, just going to bring our knight across here, just potentially giving some space, hopefully, for our rook to come back to get to some sort of safety because this pawn is definitely coming down for it. If it doesn't, we'll push here. And that's the Scud missile that we said we should have closed off um, early on in the game, but we're getting carried away with well the, the opponent doesn't know what to do type malarkey so now we're having to claw this back we're down a pawn but we're positional players we know the rooks in the wrong place rooks don't have any place in the center of the board unless of course it's to your benefit properly to your benefit and it's fully supported or it's sacrificing itself for a really good position and this isn't in a good position for us <laughs> It's losing us tempo, it's losing us pieces. Swinging across here is not going to help. It can come back down or the rook can defend. But it depends what the opponent does. They've got 30 minutes to think now and he's, he's clawed back. In. What is this? He's done all that thinking for that. If we attack it, then his pawn just drops down, then we can just attack doing something's got two on one here hasn't he so let's just go here 
That was a lot of thinking for that night move though, knowing full well the pawn can push up, so there must be some, oh he's going to go for another 2 on 1 here. And the knight's protecting so we can go there, but then he does he come back around again. Let's just push it again. And what is he on? What is he on? Is he on something? Nope, nope, nope. Uh, ba, 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 ba. One, two. Oh, yeah, nice move, nice move. Okay, let's go here. He's got the pawn. Sorry, this pawn. I've given him a pawn. Wanting to trap his knight, but it's not going to happen. So I've given up a pawn just to try and improve my position of my rook. So I'm down two pawns now. And it's not even a good position. I could have just gone for an attack just to unshevel, just uh, dishevel him a bit. He's probably wondering, well, this player doesn't know how to play chess either. <laughs> Dear with me. Shocking, shocking. Knight's nice eyeing this here for this here, but that definitely isn't going to come off. But you never know. So if he goes greedy munching, knight jumps into this spot. He's not gone greedy munching. Okay, let's go here. Make it look like we've forgotten about the pawn. Take. But it takes so long. Maybe he's going to see it. That's the magic square. It's got like a... Uh, check, 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 check. All three of them. Or does he fall for that? Oh, let's push it. He's not going to fall for anything. Is he? He's simply going to go rook here. Defend him. What do we do then? Push this oops, push this pawn onto the knight. That's not very interesting. Well, what do we say? You know, is there another check? Anyway, no, let's just push onto this knight. Hoping it's trapped, but it's not. It can go here, it can go there. Oh, it's a shame that got seen. Never mind, never mind. So we're on this pawn, so do we take this pawn, then his rook comes and he's all over. Or do we push the pawn up onto the knight, then the knight just jumps back again to this position. Oh, tricky times, tricky times. Rook could come back here facing the king, 2 on 1 with this pawn. That's an interesting one. Obviously he pushes down onto the knight, but I suppose we can take this with a check on the king. Interesting times. The plot thickens. Forgot what I said. Uh, maybe he takes, takes. Oh, this guy's messing up everything. What's that? He's got a fork, can't he, of some sort, anti with the knight. Yeah, look at that. He's got a fork. From looking like they didn't know what to do in the early part of the game to then suddenly seeing something like that. Well, I don't think I'm wearing them apples, dude. Let's take you off. You can be two plus two if you want, but I'm not having any of that fork business. Hmm. What is he, plus three now or something? Oh no, it's equal because we've got his knight. It's equal because we've got his knight. Has he gone a bit crazy or something now? Capture the pawn, and then we've got to check on his king as well if the pawn takes, but I don't think he's going to take. Let's grab this pawn. Honestly, this player is very quirky. They jump in and out of brilliance into I don't know what to do type thing and then into whoa seeing magical forks get a check here am I safe I can bring the knight back down here can't I do I need to though because I can go here and get a fork oh the magic of forks but his rook's going to put a check on us here so he wins tempo drat I'm going to have to bring this down so his other rook's going to escape anyway That's an interesting situation. 
Uh, see, I could, I could do this, wouldn't I? Put a check on his king, get that rook out of the way, and then still take this rook off the board. Yeah, that might work. Another very shifty game. Very shifty indeed. I'm going to look at the analysis on that, see how we broke through there. Um, so is there any more checks on him? No, let's just take the rook off the board. It's not going to come here because the knight will take. We do have space here to attack and then... So it looked like the opponents left the gate. I had to come back from these bad positions. Oh, look at that gauge bar. We don't stand a chance. I knew we didn't. The rook had no place in the centre of the board. It was a rubbish position and they actually grabbed the pawn. I think I would have thought that was an okay move. Probably taken with the rook, but hey, he's still taking the pawn. So the rook all over the place. Yeah. So they're definitely winning, as we knew. Now we're attacking and yeah, this rook move here was a bit odd. I don't know what that did he think that that was supported that pawn oh yeah sorry that was the um that was the fork wasn't it sorry yeah that was the fork of getting this rook here and, and it's a good job we took our time realizing that the situation was he had this knight under threat so we could take the knight off the board and that was the changer so our opponent overranked their position overregged the fact of what could potentially happen to them that was the game changer from that point on then we tried to keep the advantage as best possible yeah yeah a little bit arty i was a bit arty in the early part just trying to be fancy with oh he doesn't know what to do so i'll just do whatever i want to do and then they shocked the life out of me because they actually did know what they were doing but then they knew too much about what they knew and they got a bit too arty so yeah very interesting game very testy shifty game i like those games though but it's really weird when you see them play in a certain way in a certain part of the game and then suddenly they come out with like mad genius moves you you just you just sit back and go this can't be happening crikey but most a high percentage of the time for me anyway i can speak um i allow that to happen because I've made a bad judgment or I've made a bad maneuver so it is my fault a high percentage of the time I'm not saying all of the time I would say a high percentage so got to look at those and then you've got to wear it you've got to own it and try and develop and grow from that um, error or mistake and try and make it an advantage